So today's book is really special. There are uh, a couple of teachers that wrote this book. I helped them put it together. Um, and the name of that book is called Survival Safari. So Kat, if you'd bring the cover up, that would be great. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the cover. So if you look at this, before we, we look at, uh, before we get into the story itself, take a look at the cover and can you predict what this story might be about? Hmm. Why don't you chat in the, put in the chat box ideas of what you think Survival Safari might be about by looking at the pictures that you see on the cover. Okay, so if we go on, we're going to take a look at the first page. Uh, so have, turn the page for me, Kat. Lots of, we have seen lots of animals, okay. searching for animals and bird watching. Great, excellent. So why don't you uh, flip the page and we'll get started with our story. Um, so what's really exciting is a very special friend of mine, um, her name is Lauren, is a scientist, and she agreed to write the forward. So I'm not going to read the whole forward to you, um, but you can find this resource uh, through your teachers uh, in Science 21. But Lauren is a, science, uh, is a scientist, and part of the job that she looks at is animals that are out in the environments uh, around New York State. Uh, she grew up in New Jersey, but she is uh, a specialist here in New York State. So if you turn the page, Kat, we'll get started with our story today. So today we're going to go on a safari. We will travel to several different environments and see lots of different animals. While on our trip, we're gonna take brain pictures of all the animals we see. When you see a student with a camera, remember to take a picture. So what do I mean by brain pictures? Look very closely at the animals, what they're doing, what are the uh, parents and the offspring that you're looking at and look very carefully and then take a picture with your mind and keep that as we talk through questions. Um, let's, before we talk about this, we're gonna talk a little bit about offspring. So offspring is a word I'm going to be used. So usually when we think about offspring, we think about that they may be babies, but babies are really specific to humans. So you and your little sisters or your um, mom might have had babies, but in animal world, they have lots of different names. So collectively, we talk about parents and offspring. So I'm gonna use the word offspring on a regular basis. Just be, regular, just be ready to understand what that may be. So let's take a look at the first place we're gonna go visit on our safari. Our first stop, we will visit a hot, dry environment. There are several animals that live here. Many animal parents help their offspring survive. Let's take a look. But before we look into that, where might we be? Uh, where do you think this hot, dry environment might be? In the chat box, type some places that you think that this hot, dry environment might be. I know, desert, desert. So look closely. You see trees and grass. Where do you think this hot, dry environment might be? Hmm. Okay, turn the page, Kat. Wow, I see a rhinoceros, elephants, and lions. How are these parents helping their offspring survive? Take a look, quick, close look at the rhinoceros. What are they doing? Look at the lions. What might they be doing? Look at the elephants. What might they be doing together? And remember what we see, we see a, a student with a camera. So take a brain picture and remember what you see. Next page, Kat. The rhinoceros parent is teaching its offspring to find grass and leaves to eat. The elephant parent is teaching its offspring to use its trunk to find leaves to eat. The lion parent teaches its offspring to hunt prey and eat. What patterns do you see with all of these 
parents and offspring. Write your ideas in the chat box. Mm. Yes, they're helping them to find ways to eat. So eat is a definite thing that they need to survive. So some eat meat and some eat salad. That's an interesting way to look at the animals. So let's go on to the next page, Kat. Look at these animals now. How are these parents helping their offspring to survive? So look closely at the rhinoceros and the elephants and the lions. What might these parents and offspring be doing together? Remember, offspring are the young of the adult parents. So we see a student with a picture. Let's take a brain picture and look very closely. Let's go on to the next page, Kat. The rhinoceros parent is leading its offspring and protecting it from danger. The adult rhinoceros will use its horn to scare off predators. The elephant parent is guarding its offspring to protect it from predators. The lion parent is watching for predators to keep its offspring safe from harm. So what might a predator mean? Hmm. A predator is an, another animal that is looking to make one of those lunch. So what pattern do you see among all three of these parents? Write them in the chat box. So protection. So the, one of the things that these parents try to do is help the young, the offspring, protect themselves from predators, from other, thing, other animals that might be trying to find them harm. So that's the pattern that we see here. Let's go to the next page, Kat. So use your brain pictures that you took throughout. What patterns do you see in the offspring? Uh, what, what patterns in animal parent behavior? help their offspring to survive. So write them in the chat box. What were the things that we saw that, that the parents' behavior helped the offspring to survive? Protect, I see somebody there. Protect, I uh, see somebody else, right, protecting. Hunting for food and leaves, yes. All of those are the things that parent, those are all the behaviors that parents help with offspring survive. Okay, let's turn the page and go on to our next environment. Ooh. The next stop on our survival safari will be to a cold, harsh environment. How do animal parents help their offspring to survive here? Where do you think this cold, harsh environment may be? Put your ideas in the chat box. Someone said Antarctica. Antarctica definitely has cold ice and water. Anyone else have any ideas? So let's take a look. Turn the page for me, Kat. So check out the penguins, the caribou, caribou and the Arctic foxes. What do you see the parents doing for all of their offspring? Look really closely at each one of them. Look at the penguin. What is the penguin doing with its offspring? Look at the caribou. What are the caribou doing with their offspring? And look at the Arctic fox. What is the Arctic fox parent doing with its offspring? Any ideas? Write them in the chat box. Feeding, oh, I see that you're looking at feeding different animals. So let's take a picture of all those animals because we're gonna look at them again, again uh, at the end again. Let's turn to the next page, Kat. So here we have the penguin father is feeding its offspring. 
The father carries fish back from the ocean in his stomach. The father regurgitates the fish for its offspring to eat. Hmm, regurgitates, that's a big word. Anyone have any idea what regurgitate means? So regurgitate means that the penguin father is swimming out, he swallows the fish, he throws up a little in his mouth and be able to share it with his, with his offspring. It may sound a little gross to you and me, but that's how the penguins are able to feed their offspring. The next picture down is the caribou teaches the calf to paw through the snow and graze for plants. Remember, in a cold, harsh environment, some of those plants may be hard to find, so the caribou parent teaches the calf to paw through the snow. The Arctic fox feeds its offspring with milk that the mother produces. So there we see a female parent with some offspring uh, working through the milk that the mother produces. What patterns do you see of all these animal parents? Write in the chat box. Hmm. What is the penguin parent doing? What is the caribou parent doing? What is the Arctic fox parent doing? I see somebody wrote, everyone is hungry. Okay, so let's turn the page, Kat. Now we're gonna look at some more behaviors that these parents and animals, and parents and offspring do. Look at these animal parents and offspring now. What do you see? So take a look at the penguin parent. Do you see its offspring really, really low in the picture? Let's take a look at the caribou. They're in a snowy environment and they're all walking in one direction. And look at that last picture. Remember, we talked about the penguin, the caribou, and the Arctic fox. What made that last picture mean? I don't see an animal there. Hmm. Let's take a picture. Let's take a brain picture. Let's go on to the next page, Kat, thanks. The emperor penguin protects its offspring, offspring from the cold winds. Do you see the little offspring of the penguin right underneath the folds of its belly? Then we look at our next picture. The caribou migrate with their offspring to find shelter from cold weather and new plants to eat. Migrate means that they work together as a whole family to move to a place where they can find more plants to eat. The Arctic fox protects its offspring in a den dug in the ground. The fox will also take shelter in the den during severe weather. So although we don't see that parent and offspring, we can see what the parent teaches the offspring to do, to dig a protective den in the ground so they can keep themselves protected during the, the cold, dry, harsh environment. So what patterns do you see? Type it into the chat box. Hmm. Shelter is one of the answers that I see. Keeping the cubs protected. That's another thing that students may be looking at as well. These are all really good behaviors that you're watching. So turn the page, Kat. What patterns of animal behavior, what patterns in animal parent behavior help their offspring to survive? Remember all the brain pictures we took? Write them in the chat box. What are the ways that we learned in, in the cold, uh, cold environment of the way the parent, the parent animals help their offspring to survive? help them to eat, and help them to shelter. Good answers, guys. Let's turn the page and go on to our last environment on our safari. So our final stop will be to the seasonal forest environment. Seasonal forest environment. What do you think that means? So a seasonal forest environment may look familiar to you because that's the forest that it's green late in the spring, which we're starting to see now, Usually there's lots of plants and a lot of green plants during the summer. 
in the fall, they start to turn colors sometimes, but we still have some green plants. But in the winter, some of those trees may no longer have leaves on them and they may not grow as much. So in the seasons, the forest changes. So that's what we mean by a seasonal forest environment. The environment may look familiar to you because you probably have seen some of these forests around. How do animal parents help their offspring to survive here? Let's take a look. Turn the page, Kat. Amazing. I see bears and birds and deer. What do you notice the parent doing for their offspring? Take a look at the bears. Do you see the parent bear and the offspring bear? Hmm. Then we see a robin. That's the kind of bird we're looking at. And what is the parent robin doing with its offspring? Then in the lower left, we have some deer. We have a parent and two offspring. Take a close look and take a brain picture. Let's go on to the next page, Kat. The black bear parent catches the fish for its offspring to eat. The bird parent brings food to its baby chicks. The deer parent shows its offspring where to find grass and other plants to eat. Hmm, what patterns do you see? Write the patterns of the way that the parents and the offspring work together. Type them in the chat box. Oh, I see somebody wrote feeding. Hmm, anything else that you could see? Are they all helping them try to get food to eat? Let's go on to the next page, Kat. So look at these animals now. What do you see? Look carefully at the bear. Where is the bear? Hmm. Let's take a look at the bird. What's the bird doing? Now we look at the deer and its white tail is easy for everyone to see. Hmm. Oh, we see a student with a camera. Let's take a brain picture. On to the next page, Kat. The offspring bear cries to alert its mother that he's in danger. That poor little bear is kind of stuck in a tree and he's using his voice to communicate to its parent. The offspring birds make chirping sounds to tell their mother that they're hungry. Hmm. So they are communicating with their chirping sounds to their parent that they're hungry. The offspring deer raises its tail to warn other deer of danger nearby. Hmm. So the deer raises its tail, its white tail, because normally it's brown all over, and it uses that tail to communicate something to the rest of the other animals around there and to their parent. So what patterns do you see? Type it in the chat box. So I see somebody wrote telling their parents that are in trouble, training their cubs to tell them how, to, to, how that may be to communicate. Let's go on to the next page, Kat. So take a look at all the brain pictures we took in this environment. What patterns in the animal, parent, and offspring behavior help the animals to survive? all the things we saw. Write them in the chat box. Communicating with parents about what they need and what they want. Helping them learn how to get their own food or be able to get the food directly to them. Let's turn the page. So our now trick trip or takes us back to our classroom. Did you enjoy your survival safari? Tell me what you liked the best. Which animal was your favorite in all the animals that we looked at? So I'll give you a few minutes to type in your favorite animal from this safari. In all the environments we visited, 
we saw patterns of animal behavior that helped the offspring survive. So somebody liked the robin best. Somebody liked the penguin the best. Someone liked the black bears the best. Oh, somebody liked the elephant. Someone likes the deer, something that we see a lot in this area of the, of the country. Somebody likes the bears and the penguins. Great, these are some of my favorite animals. So I love to have these in this book. Let's turn the page, Cat, and we'll take a little bit more about the animals that we saw. So we observed parents providing food and teaching their offspring how to find food in order to survive. We saw parents protecting their offspring from weather and from other predators. We also observed animals communicating their needs to the parents. So some of the behaviors that parents help with their offspring is how to find food and water, how to protect themselves from weather and predators, and also how to communicate that. Hmm, do you ever do that with your parents? Do your parents help you find food and water? Do they help protect you? And do you use communication either with your mouth or with your hands to tell them what you need and want? Mm -hmm, yeah, me too. So where do, you see, where do you see animals helping offspring in your neighborhood? Have you ever seen this kind of behavior? Where might that be? You can put that in the chat box as well. Cats and kittens, we hear them mew and they may get milk from their mother just like the Arctic fox. Uh, so let's turn the page, cat. Oh my, thinking about our trip, how can human parents help their offspring survive? What do you think that this offspring, which in humans we call a baby, might be communicating to its parents? So when a baby cries, what are they trying to communicate? That it wants food? That is certainly something that a baby, when they cry, says. Remember, babies are humans. Offspring are for all of our animals. So they could be hungry or they could be, ta they could be tired. They may need to have their diaper changed, certainly. And you're saying sounds. Yeah, they're using sounds. In a human, the offspring may not have words yet, so they use crying and other sounds, just like other animals do. Oh, that they may need milk or food, all of those kinds of things. So turn the page, Kat. I think that's our last uh, page. Mm -hmm. so this is the end of the book. So we talked about patterns of animals and offspring and how they, how they help the offspring to survive. What patterns did you see for all three environments? Was there anything that you saw for all three?